Rendering when done well can be very effective for communicating a concept, for example in marketing or in the cover pages of some engineering documentation. However, it seems that the industrial design CAD and maker community, most people don't utilize rendering in CAD software like Fusion 360. I've had some great response to the renders I have produced for various projects, so I'll share my workflow and techniques to help you get started and achieve some great looking renders. In Fusion 360, the normal workspace is Design, where we create the 3D model. In here you can change the appearance of surfaces or bodies and this can assist in visualising during the design process. The software will only give a limited visual representation of the model in its environment in the Design workspace. But switching over to Render workspace, we see reflections, shadows and textures in more detail. As you can see from that time lapse, I've created this model. The idea for this is it is a device that would go in a Samsung Gear VR instead of a standard phone. We've got stereoscopic cameras for stereoscopic night vision with LED rings that would have infrared LEDs in there. And if this was going to be made, I think the cameras would have to be bigger. They'd have to be more infrared LEDs, but um, it's just a sort of like a concept, a little bit of a sci-fi style thing going on. Let's have a look at how I've um, done these renders using emissivity and custom lighting to get some really cool effects. So normally you'd be in the design workspace, people should be familiar with that. And so now we're going to the render workspace and straight away you can see it's a bit different. Uh, the lighting, basically it's rendering shadows, reflections, and you've got the ground plane shadow and um, yeah it just looks a bit more realistic so there's also textures will um, show up so we'll start off with appearance click on the colored wheel there and bring up appearance tab um, generally if you're working with aluminium or even if you're not you can use aluminium so we go metal aluminium anodized glossy grey pretty generic so we'll use that for the main body there and that's the other thing to note is if you want different appearances select bodies components you can just then drag and drop the appearance onto the different bodies and it'll just apply that for you there so let's zoom in here if I want to add um, a different looking aluminium for these ridges the way I like to do things and there is no by default there's no black anodized so we go duplicate edit now I'll rename that to black black all I've got to do really is change this color so if you go really really actual black it doesn't look right just you want to go quite dark gray and now we've got anodized black I can drag that on here here on the camera okay and now we're getting somewhere so um, if I do like a black glossy paint for this little body there and then glass there's a few different ways to do glass they've actually got a glass folder now smooth okay so I'll show you what glass clear it looks like you'd think that's what you you that'd be what you want now if you notice when I was modeling this I actually put a little fillet on here to make it look like a curved lens whether or not that's realistic I don't know but um, <clears throat> it'll look like something rather than just a flat plane I've just blocked in there try and make it look a bit more realistic so I'll do a quick in, in canvas render although my video recording software doesn't like it so we'll see how we go Okay, I'll leave that there. Um, basically what I found is it's okay. Maybe you want to try something that's not just purely clear, like window actually has a bit of a texture to it. The blue is not quite what we want. I'll just stick with glass grey. But I think you do need some sort of a texture there to make it look right. Let's go to plastic. And 
opaque. So you can add opaque things already without even doing anything, which is cool. So you can just drag that straight in and I've got opaque plastic. Now let's take that a step further. And if you want to modify something, as I said before, you want to copy that, duplicate, edit this, and I'll call it emiss for emissivity. And we'll go to advanced. Drag this out, and there's a few things going on here, and it gets a little bit complicated. But basically, changing the color of this. Let's say we make this green for this one. So this is the color that you're basically getting. This is the base color for the parameters. Then you've got roughness and reflectiveness or reflectance. I'll leave those alone. People can play with them. What I really want to look at is. Uh, it's translucency and emissivity. So this is a set for half a mil, which is not very deep. Now it's hard to tell, but we'll see. Turn that up to one, and it should look. You can see this edge here, so it's got the reflection coming off, but it looks like the color is coming from underneath. Um, I don't really know what this color here does we want to change how much luminance it has so if we change that to 10 see it's starting to glow a little bit and you know if I if I move this slider it gets out of control pretty quick so it's just instantly it's too bright so uh, I'll just go to 100 even that's pretty bright so so now with that set <coughs> So the scene itself is uh, is pretty bright, and I'll be able to change that in a minute, and that'll that'll make this emissivity uh, more noticeable. Uh, but before I do that, I'll just quickly cover a couple of other things. So if we go, is it plastics? We've got text. I just want to show textured plastics. There's uh, three different ones here without downloading anything. You got random, regular, and skin. So that's just something, an option there if people want to have a, um, a textured plastic looking body in their model. Uh, I don't think they look that great, depending on how you use it, it can be okay. So I'll close that off. Scene settings, that's the ball with the corner that brings up this one. So I've set mine up basically how you have it if uh, you open this, it's the default. So it'll be quite bright. The background will be set to environment and you have your ground plane. I don't want to spend too much time on this so I'll just cover it quickly but you've got ground plane on off then you can move it up and down as well so um, if in position here that's how you can move the ground plane and um, if you have the if you have the ground plane if you don't want to use the ground plane you can turn off um, you can turn off the background and obviously ground plane isn't there and this will increase your render speed significantly and also it can look better in context with other things on for example on a website if you've got a black background website or a white black background website um, you can change the color to black or white and when you render out you can actually render it with a transparent background as well if you want to do that so um, as I was saying, the, uh, the environment's quite bright, so we'll turn that down. Okay, now you can really see this emissivity doing its thing. And that's, this is with our in-canvas render. Um, I'll try and do an in-canvas render again, and we'll see how the video recording software likes it. Okay, I'll leave that there. Um, that's a quick demonstration so the other thing to cover here so that's just the settings tab environment uh, I think cool light is a standard or one of these but um, the one I prefer is photo booth because well, let's go back to cool light and I'll demonstrate so if I get the yeah the see these weird um, artifacts show up and I, I guess this is supposed to be there but um, it, uh, it's, it's distracting from 
the model, in my opinion. Uh, it can be used for effect, like if you're rendering a car and you want it to look like it's in a showroom with the lights, then you can do that. Um, or you can actually make your own lights and do it that way if that's what you're going for. But um, yeah, in my opinion, photo booth is better because it's much smoother and um, it's just like a very soft, infinite size dome lighting like that. So that's my preference is photo booth. And then uh, if we turn the lighting down a little bit more, it's quite dark here now, but there's still, if you angle it right, you can get lighting on there. And then um, now what we can do is if I want the light to shine in from a certain direction, rotate, you can rotate the light around. So now it's coming in from this left side. You can see it's lighting up these features and depending on how we angle it, we're angling our view. So now you get some cool lighting on there showing off these features. And um, yeah, there's all sorts of things you can play around to get whatever effect you desire. Now we'll go and have a look at um, what I've actually ended up creating here. And you can see what I've done is I've got some text here. And if you zoom right in, there's a filleted edge. There's a specific reason for that. And that is when you have a curve, there's more chance of light reflecting off that edge. So if you think of a stealth bomber, it's got square edges so that radar won't reflect back uh, EMF to the radar station and a normal aeroplane that's curved will reflect back its radar location so that's a similar thing with uh, in the rendering engine and in real life is if you have a curved edge you'll be able to shine light off it more easily than a square edge so obviously a square edge infinitely square edge won't actually shine any light but um, so I'll just quickly cover off how how I how I got to that point and how I've added these these custom uh, lights here. So um, back to our other demonstration model in the timeline. I've got some things blocked out, so I'll just quickly go through those. So I've done a sketch and then de-embossed the text in there. Then I've created a um, offset plane and a sketch and then extruded out this little circle and this ring. And then I filleted the little circle, that little sp uh, cylinder, so that I was trying to get it to shine out more evenly. I believe that worked. And then, uh, yeah, and then the other fillet was adding the fillet to the edge of all the text. Okay, so that's that. So now back to this one. <clears throat> now, if you look at this, yeah, so I've got these lights in here and they're not doing anything. And the reason for that is because they only really show up when you do a render. So we can do an in-canvas render again. Okay, I'll leave that there. Hopefully that showed up. Trying to do a quick demonstration of getting a sort of a cool angle here. So I'll turn on in canvas render. Uh, that'll do that position, maybe about there. So now I've got the red shining on the body of the uh, the model there, and <clears throat> I'll stop that. Stop that render. Bring up the scene settings and the position. Now I can rotate the light around so that I've got the lighting how I want it. Now, this might just show up in the video, but the text, all the little edges of the text there have light shining off those fillets, which is pretty cool, but I don't think it's enough for anyone to be able to read what the text says. So I'll just swing this light around. About here. So now I've got one camera in the light and one camera in the dark. Maybe you can just read the text. I'll do one more click with the rotation. Yeah, okay, there. That's about. That's a pretty good little setup. So 
I've got my own lighting that I've added. I've got the scene lighting rotated so that the features are lit up the way I want. And I'll do an in-canvas render. That might not show up in the video, but in any case, now let's have a look at the, the renders that I've produced. Alright, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. I've actually scripted out and planned nine more YouTube videos. Uh, I haven't uploaded any for a few months, but I've actually been pretty busy and I have been documenting what I've been doing. So when I have some downtime, I'll start producing and publishing that work I've done. So please consider subscribing if you want to see what I've been up to. And thanks. I'll catch you next time. Bye.